how the European Union, at that time it was still called the European Community, was very vocal uh, against such a notion. I'm talking now about, let's say, the 19, uh, 1980s. Uh, well, the 1980s, that, that's uh, less than 40 years ago. Less than 40 years ago. In the Belgian uh, uh, regulations about unemployment benefits, at that time, uh, it still mentioned the notion of uh, head of family. If the head of, well, actually, I think it, it had already deleted the notion, but it had replaced it with uh, something else which, which came down to the same. Let's say in the 1970s, this was still uh, present in the law, the notion of head of family. Because when the head of family lost his, yeah, usually it was the man, lost his job, well, his employment, unemployment uh, benefit was higher than when what was called a cohabitant, you know, uh, the spouse who cohabited with the head of the family. Uh, when, when she, uh, usually that was the woman, when she lost her job, well, her unemployment benefit was considerably less, or it diminished much faster as time went by. And the European Commission, let's say the administration of the European Union, was fiercely opposed to it, saying this is against equal treatment of men and women. And they were especially, let's say, vocal and especially opposed against any notion of head of family. What is this? Head of family? No, there is no head in the family. Again, men and women are equal. So if you want to have a head of the family, then both are head. So that's, let's say, how the world views things. Everything is 50-50. Don't you dare say if you are a man that you are the head of your wife, you know. Uh, I don't know how, how about the Philippines, but at least in the West. Uh, well, they will not yet put you in jail for it, but they will really say, hmm, what, what, what an old-fashioned guy is this, you know. Uh, he has <laughs> concepts of the Middle Ages, you know. They, they quickly forgetting that this is not from the Middle Ages, but well, deep into the 20th century, this was the standard. And what was the standard half a century ago is now ridiculed. All of this contributes to uh, girls and boys losing gender identity. Um, schools basically teach, well, not basically, they teach exactly the same to boys and girls. You know, I, even uh, I, in, uh, in Belgium, I went to a boys' school. Can you imagine that? A, boy, a school just for boys, and then there were schools just for girls. All of that had to be abandoned because, of course, men and women, boys and girls, uh, are equal. So, suddenly that was considered a bad thing. Well, by the way, I survived the boys' school. I'm still alive, I'm the living proof that you can survive it, at least. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, in those days, there were still some classes, let's say, that were, let's say, more specific for girls, eh? it's in girls specific girls' schools. Um, they might learn how to sew clothes, for instance, which they would not teach boys. So in those days there was still more gender identity and less people who were inclined to, uh, less men who were inclined to wear women's clothes and less women who were inclined to wear men's clothes. So it 